Welcome to deep dive into loops in Databricks workflows. This is a feature we've been waiting for and it's finally here. Finally, we can implement logic in Databricks workflows, which we couldn't implement before. And in many cases, we had to rely on other tools like Azure Data Factory. But now this logic, like for example, this loop, we can implement in workflows and we can loop array and then for every element execute something, task or job. In that, in that example, which I will show you, we have to execute notebook for every city. And before the scenario, if you wanted to do it inside workflow, you had to specify every node, every task separately and the same notebook execute three times and put different parameters. Of course, you had, you had possibility to use some workaround like execute notebooks from notebooks and some others. But if you use just notebooks and workflows, th this was the way. But now things are much more easier because you can loop through array. So this, what is on the left is our array. And for every element of that array, you can execute task or job or whatever. Let's look in practice how it uh, works. Uh, we create a new job, we call it loop job, and in type, uh, we specify that it's for each. So this is the new type of task, it is for each. And then in input, we specify array of our cities. And then we add tasks to that loop. So this is task which will be executed every time when next element of array is processed. So we select notebook as our task and we add parameters because now we need to pass that input from looper, that one element of the array and put it here as a value of parameter. So we name parameter city and we put as a value input. So this is this input from looper. And then let's click run and let's view run. We execute those tasks uh, sequentially for now. So concurrency is one and we see that in that uh, task, our in that looper task, uh, our input is passed, it's our array, and now it's uh, running every notebook one by one. So we can see that first notebook was executed and the first parameter was passed, so city, and it was also printed by widget. So let's look in a bit more complicated example. So we will change inputs of our looper and let's put here the array of JSONs. So we still process one element, uh, one by one element of array. So we have three elements, but inside every element we have JSON and this JSON will be uh, transformed to parameters of the notebook. So in that scenario, we will have two parameters. So let's set it, let's copy it and paste it here. And let's save a task. And here inside uh, our looper task, which is executed notebook in our looper, we need to specify every parameter separately. For example, we can, we can pass everything together as an input, but we can also divide it here using uh, dot notation. So we can put city separately and ID as a city ID separately. So it will be put as a two separate parameters, which will take using widgets. And let's set concurrence as 100. So this way, we will be sure that all of our tasks are executed at once. Of course, here you need to be careful because you can put too much stress on your system or you can kill your driver because if you start 100 tasks in the same moment, it can be too much. So better use a bit lower number, but we are going here with the maximum one. 
uh, which doesn't matter because anyway we have only three elements in array. So let's run it. Let's view the run. And we can see that all tasks were triggered together. And to every task, both city and ID is passed. We have two more columns. And we can see here that uh, task is starting. And it's correctly because we can see both Berlin and city ID one uh, pass through widget. OK, but in real world scenario, you don't want to hard code that inputs in workflow. You, can, you want to put them programmatically. Uh, and pass it from external system or JSON. So let's create another task, which is looper generator, which will generate for us that, uh, that parameters. So in that task, we have uh, the same JSON, but here we use uh, task value set, the utils function, to uh, put that JSON as a parameters uh, to our workflow. So, in fo for example, in that place, you can take that JSON from your config file and you can take it from database. But we put here, we name it it's cities, and we create, we create that additional task. We need to change dependency because looper generator needs to be executed first and then iteration. So let's change it. And uh, we need to change this dependency and we need to remove all that input. And instead of that, we need to reference that task which generate that task value. So we use the name of the task and then we generate, we get values. And uh, as a, instead of my value, we need to put this name of task value set. So the cities, yes, uh, the name of task value. And this way, we will pass everything from that loop gener looper generating to, to looper iteration. So, uh, so this this way, uh, this, this way we will do it like programmatically. And here I really like that design where, where we have uh, design of looper in workflow because we have few tasks stuck stacked on each other. So it's, re it's really nice uh, and OK. And that uh, looper is running and it should create that task value. Let's click and confirm. Uh, yes, it created task value cities. So, so without problem in looper iteration, we should get uh, that task value cities and pass it to uh, to task, yes, it's uh, it's there and all tasks are executed. So uh, from looper generator, everything was passed to iterator. So uh, this is a really nice solution that we can do such a things now in Databricks workflows. Uh, and one special special announcement soon it will be possible to use also SQL and generate task value from SQL. So in that scenario, it will be really easy because we can get, uh, we can just use select statement and uh, it will be like automatically passed to task, uh, task values. So something like this is in roadmap. It doesn't exist, but maybe in future we will just write select city ID from cities and do, do that video another time using uh, SQL. So, uh, I think that is a great announcement that we have that uh, for each loops in Databricks. And I think uh, the Databricks workflows are now much more powerful than ever. And I hope that you liked that video and see you in the next one.